So people frequently ask me, what are problems that can relate to a baby being resuscitated after birth? Well, resuscitation uh, means that things are done to the baby to help them breathe and to try to get their heart rate uh, back to normal. Um, there are some babies who, when they're born for a variety of reasons, um, have low APGAR scores uh, and um, uh, have to be resuscitated in order to survive. Um, and, and I'm not going to get into all the reasons that, that that's necessary, but what I am going to talk about today is what can happen after the baby is born and needs resuscitated, but is not resuscitated adequately. So first of all, let's talk about the APGAR scores because the APGAR scores um, were, uh, were developed uh, probably 50 or 60 years ago by Virginia APGAR, uh, a lady doctor at Columbia University Medical School, which is actually where I went to medical school. I was never fortunate enough to meet Dr. Apgar because she was dead before, uh, before I was th there, but um, apparently she was a very, very important person um, in the medical school, and as we know, uh, has the Apgar score named after her. Well, when a baby is born, uh, everywhere in the United States and many places around the world, they are assigned an Apgar score. And what that is, is uh, baby is examined and what uh, the doctor or the nurse does is look at five different things about the baby. First of all, um, they look at the heartbeat. Um, and if the heartbeat is above a certain number or below a certain number, they score it in a certain way. Um, second, they look for respiratory effort. Um, and some babies will have a great respiratory effort. They will cry and you'll know that they're breathing very, very well. Um, some will not. Um, third, uh, you look for uh, reflex irritability, um, where the baby, um, if, you, if you simply pinch the baby a little bit on the toe, the baby will move um, and, show you good reflex irritability. Some babies don't move at all. Um, the other is the skin color. Uh, and the skin color is um, uh, usually a difficult one to assess on a baby because many times babies are uh, quite cyanotic or quite blue all over their body. And sometimes they're not. And you get a different score uh, when the skin is, is better. Now that's four out of five of the APGAR scores uh, components, but that frequently gives you plenty of information about how you, uh, how you, how the baby has been born um, uh, through the, uh, through the birth canal and how the baby has survived that birth. Um, so uh, when a doctor looks at that APGAR score, and sees a low APGAR score, then they know that this baby needs help. Sometimes all you need to do is stimulate the baby and they come around just fine. Sometimes uh, you need to suction the baby um, and, uh, and, and take uh, secretions out of the baby's mouth and nose, and then they do fine. Uh, but sometimes you need to actually breathe for the baby. And the way this is done, uh, first of all, is that you, uh, you can put a little mask over the baby's mouth and nose um, and pump the mask uh, so that a breath goes into the baby. Um, and that sometimes will bring the baby around. If that doesn't work, then you may need to do endotracheal intubation. Well, endotracheal means inside the trachea. And of course, in order to do that, you have to go through the mouth, you have to visualize the trachea, and then put a small plastic tube in the trachea, connect it to that same bag and mask, um, and give a breath for the baby. Um, sometimes, when this happens to a baby, the baby um, 
really needs that endotracheal intubation quickly. Uh, and sometimes people are not there in the delivery room to be able to do it efficiently. Um, and if they can't, uh, then you have a problem. Uh, one case that I dealt with some years ago uh, was a baby who um, needed an endotracheal intubation and uh, the tube was placed, but the tube went down the esophagus, which is right next to the trachea. And when that's done, no air is getting into the lungs uh, when you try to breathe for that baby. Well, that baby uh, went to the newborn intensive care unit with that tube in the esophagus. Uh, and because of that, uh, the baby ended up getting serious brain damage. There are ways to detect whether that tube is in the trachea or in the esophagus, but at that particular hospital on that particular day, uh, the nurses and the doctors didn't do that. And that baby ended up with serious brain damage. Um, now, um, once the baby is resuscitated um, with the endotracheal tube, the tube has to be tied in to the baby's face. Um, and sometimes the nurses do it correctly, sometimes they don't. And therefore, if they don't, the tube will slip out. And if the tube slips out, um, the baby needs to be intubated again. Uh, sometimes that's not done in a timely way. So there are many ways that mistakes can be made with regard to resuscitation of a baby. Um, and uh, these are just a few. Uh, another way is sometimes babies need to have cardiac massage. And that needs to be done in a specific way. Um, sometimes that is not. Once again, uh, there are observers in most every birth, and what they're supposed to do is write down everything that happens or doesn't happen. Um, we have to go through those records and determine uh, whether these things happened uh, as they were supposed to. So if you have additional questions about neonatal resuscitation or anything related to neonates and obstetrics, please click below and uh, we will get back to you and let you know uh, whatever you need to know. Thank you very much.